Thank you. So uh, the, the, the last question from the previous talk is actually kind of, kind of a great setup for what I'm going to talk about now. So, you know, I'm Peter Amstutz. I worked on the you know, project Play of Careverse and one of the authors of the CWL spec, um, as well as um, doing actually the TOIL integration. So what I'm going to talk about today <clears throat> is actually is some of the things that we've done to show uh, running the same workflow in very different hardware and software environments. So, you know, Michael talked about CWL 1.0, so that's, that's released. And so we want to have a robust standard, and that means we want to have multiple interoperating implementations. So it's not enough to just have one piece of software that you run everywhere because it probably doesn't run everywhere. <clears throat> or you have different pieces of software that are optimized for different needs. So something that runs well on your laptop may not run well on um, HPC cluster, it may not run well on the cloud. You may have a web workbench system where you're doing things interactively. You may have a production pipeline where you're doing hundreds of samples a week. So you really want to be able to um, <clears throat> go between these different pieces of software and know that, and really have confidence that this is going to work. And so, you know, based on, and if we have this standard that's really, you know, hopefully one day will be sort of ubiquitous, what other ecosystems does this enable? So this sort of also goes to the idea of the question of what are the, you know, what kind of innovation now can we have if we now have a, a level, a baseline assumption that yes, if I bring this to another system, it would, it's going to work. So sort of like, you know, the way the, the World Wide Web has enabled web applications, all kinds of things we could have never imagined. Um, we don't want to be stuck in the world where we just have America Online uh, and Prodigy and, you know. <laughs> so here's the experiment. Um, this is, this, it's, it's actually pretty small scale. Um, you know, I did this a few months ago as I'm developing all this software. So actually Dan has done probably bigger, much bigger scale things here. But, you know, the, you know, what's the hypo, the, what, you know, the, the question we want to ask is can we take this unmodified workflow and using different workflow runners, different cloud providers, different storage systems, different schedulers, so change, you know, completely different software stack underneath the workflow and get the exact same results. Give the, given the same inputs, you would expect to get the same results. That's what reproducibly, computational reproducibly means. But that doesn't always happen in practice. So how do we really verify this? How do we validate this? Um, so in this experiment, I'm using BC Bio Next Gen. Um, Brad's going to talk more about this later, so I won't, I won't um, step on his talk. But we use the alignment workflow from that, which has three main steps. It has a, a preparation. Uh, then it's a parallel that chunks up a sample into a bunch of pieces, does alignment in parallel, and then merges it back in to get a BAM file. So TOIL, um, Dan actually talked about TOIL a little bit. Um, the, the TOIL sort of model is that you have a command line tool and you run a single workflow. So you log into your shell node and you say CWL TOIL something, 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 and then you run that in screen or, or NoHup or Tmux or something, and then, and then you can walk away from it. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's a sort of lightweight thing that you, you invoke manually. In this case, we're running on AWS. We're storing our files uh, in S3 and is using Mesos for scheduling. And uh, the way that this uh, works is, internally is that it's actually converting the CWL work Workflow graph to Toil's own workflow graph. So Toil represents the workflow graph in a Python data structure, and so um, it's using some some code from the CWL tool reference implementation to load the file. But in fact, once it's handed off to Toil, Toil is doing um, all of the work of actually evaluating, scheduling, retrieving files. You know all of these details. And uh, well, here's a link to Toil, but you saw that already. 
So uh, the other system that I use this on is on Arvados. So Arvados, sort of in contrast to Toil, is a managed architecture. It has nine or ten microservices. Um, you know, it re requires sort of being installed and set up, but what you get for that is that you can submit a workflow and you can, through a web workbench, you, you can walk away. Um, you don't need to uh, sort of log into a shell node just to run your workflow, and you can monitor this through a uh, website or through other alerts. Um, in this case, we're running on Azure, so very different from AWS. If anyone's ever used, if you've used both of them, you'd agree. Um, we're running on Arvados Keep Storage System, which is also significantly different from S3, um, using Arvados Crunch, which is a job submission layer, and then scheduling out to Slurm. And um, in this case, using a different workflow engine. So in the case of Toil, Toil has its own workflow graph. This is using the workflow solver from, from CWL tool. So there's a little bit of code shared from the reference implementation, but significantly different in most, uh, most ways. So the setup for this experiment, um, we need to upload the files. So BC Bio Next Gen has a big blob of like 50 gigabytes of reference files. So we had to upload those into an S3 bucket. We also had to upload those to our Avados. Um, the actual input files, the FastQ files, and the workflow files, we copy to a cluster shell node. Uh, and we get the Docker image from Docker Hub. So here's an example of how these two workflows were kicked off. And so it's just really easy running on the command line. Um, there's not a whole lot to show. Once these run, there's not a whole lot to show. Um, I could show you log files, but that's not very interesting. But suffice to say, when they run to completion and then they print out the, um, the output of your, um, from the workflow. And so these both ran successfully. Um, but interesting detail is that we actually got slightly different BAM files. They're off by about you know, a few, few tens of bytes. And so we're not quite sure why they're different. But when we did a comparison with Sam Tools View, turns out they're actually the same. So that was, that was exciting that taking, again, taking very different software stacks, running this in two different places, and demonstrating that we got the same results. And so you can see the data with a public Arvados project. Um, you can get the slides later and click on that link. So, you know, the, again, the motivation here is to have real portability. Uh, there are things that, that call themselves standards that are not actually portable. Um, you know, sometimes you have something that uh, may be called a standard, but is so kind of loosely defined that there's just too much wiggle room. And as a result, actually interoperability is really bad because there's just too many things that are, that are too poorly defined and everybody does something a little bit different. And so it just ends up becoming a file format hell. And so we don't want that. We want you to be able to confidently write a workflow and bring it to another system, another software stack, another implementation, and say, yes, this is going to run, and it's going to run the same way, and I'm going to get, get, I'm going to get the same results. So what are some of the ways that we can, we can you know, ensure that? So uh, one of the things the community has set up is a continuous validation. So we have a, a Jenkins server that has a number of the different CWL implementations, Arvados, CWL Tool, Galaxy, Planemo, uh, Toil, uh, Bunny, Rabix, and is running the conformance tests. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of red dots. That's the next thing we have to work on. But this is something that we can use to sort of confidently, <laughs> when, when everything's sort of sorted out, be able to confidently say that yes, these implementations are actually all, they're able to run a set of workflows and get the same, that they're running a set of conformance tests, a set of representative workflows and producing uh, reliable results. So if you have, 
you know, something, if you have these representative workflows, you actually know you have evidence that it's been run in these five or six different environments and gotten the exact same results. So, all right, so now let me talk about sort of this ecosystem. So if you can actually trust that you can write this workflow and then bring it to another system and have it work, you know, this is, this is like, this, you know, we have, again, going to, to web standards, you have five or six web browsers you can choose from and you can confidently take your web browser to a website and, re and expect it to work. Um, it's not like the bad old days when it's like this site only works in Internet Explorer and this site only works in Netscape and this site only doesn't work anywhere. Um, you know, you really, you want to be able to pick what software you're using based on your needs and not based on the particular um, data formats it's able to consume or, you know, the, the particular workflow format that it consumes. You want to pick it on what it's able to do for you. So this, this allows, this separates this workflow de development from the platform details. <coughs> And it allows you, uh, if you're going to a provider, like a cloud provider, to bring your own workflow, you're not reliant on the cloud provider maybe to do development for you. Like maybe it has to, they have to do an integration for you and you need to talk to developers and it's really, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of high barrier to entry. Well, here, maybe you've already developed it and now you're going to a, a, some provider and say, okay, I already built this. Can you run this for me? Um, and another thing this enables is some APIs. So uh, the Containers and Workflows Task Team of the Data Working Group of the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, with that horrible acronym, uh, is working on some APIs around this idea of, of portable workflows. So the first one I want to mention is the GA4GH Tool Registry API. And so this is uh, intended to enable a federated app store for bioinformatics. Um, so this means actually not just that there's a website that you go to that you browse, but actually that there's a programmatic API that lists all the tools that are on, on a registry that other things can access. So if you have a web workbench, sorry, a third party web workbench, you could also access this tool API or this tool registry through this API. And so you get access to this um, sort of app store uh, without necessarily having to delegate to this, this app, you know, some other registry that's operated by a third party. Um, and it also allows you to have multiple registries, so you might have a public registry, but also a private registry where you're not sharing certain tools. Um, and the sort of implementation I, I uh, encourage everybody to go to today is docstore.org, which is, implements this API, but also has a very nice web interface for registering and uploading your tools. So uh, the second piece of this is the GA4GH workflow submission API that we're working on. This is also would be a REST API. And this would be something if you're developing maybe visualization software, uh, again, some kind of uh, like a workbench, maybe a very domain specific workbench where you're, you're trying to support, you know, biologists or doctors. And so you have some very specific um, you know, workflows that they're going to, they're going to run and you're providing a more suitable interface and not a generic interface, but you need to then do some significant work on the back end. This would be an API that you could use to talk to a generic computation system and not have your, your visualization front end have to also become a workflow system just because it needs to write, talk to some tools. Um, so again, this is something that's, that's sort of uh, being worked on, um, but it's very simple. You know, you would just you just post it. You say, "I have a workflow. Here's a URL to my workflow. Here's a bunch of URLs to my data. Run this, and and I will I will pull and I will get my results back." So, easier sharing of workflows, easier integration of workflows. We mean fewer bad hacks. Things are cleaner. Things work reliably. Things don't have weird side effects. We don't reinvent the wheel all the time. We spend more time doing science and less time just debugging bash errors. So it sounds like a good future to me.
Thank you very much. Thank you.